So good morning and it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. It's about 5.30 and nice and cool. And we look up here. We got some awesome skies today. So today, um, we'll update on what's going on around in um, uh, our garden areas and everything. Um, We'll take a walk down and start by the chickens first of all. And over this weekend, I kind of touched on this before, um, we did, uh, here is the run, and we did put this new uh, yard for the chickens over here. And it's basically six feet fencing and that, and the cheap tees post uh, cable tied over from uh, Fleet Farm. And this tarp here to keep give them a little more shade. And about the only thing left we have is we're going to be putting a door from the old run into here along the side of the wall so we can uh, basically just let them out for the day and we're not going through this door with them because that's a real adventure and a half having to uh, train them to go around in that without running off. So yeah, a couple of them got a little bit of their freedom out when we did this, but they didn't do too bad. But as I touched them um, on a while back and that, we did, I think last week, um, one of our chickens is now in chicken heaven. Um, Still don't know why, um, but the other 12 are healthy and getting as rambunctious as always today. Um, now what we're going to use for the door is I cannibalized an old dog crate and took a bolt cutters to it and uh, got it out. We'll set her up here by the there so you can get a little bit better idea and this side will basically be uh, we're going to take the door here and we're going to open it up and the door area will be uh, covered with chicken or not with chicken wire with a uh, hardware cloth and we left the door connected to the frame for a purpose and when we get done with that uh, door and it opens good it's going to open inside the old run and the reason is um, the frame will be connected with a lot of cable ties to the uh, hardware cloth and I'll build a frame if needed over but I don't think that will be necessary and that way um, it'll still be 100% covered by hardware cloth and predators will not have any access to the handles um, so we're going to set that bad boy down and that's my goal for the day. Now, why I, it seems like I'm rigging everything up with hardware or with our, with cable ties. And my logic in that is uh, pretty much most of the fencing and uh, post and everything can be reused. Um, fencing ain't exactly cheap. It's up to 40 50 bucks right now I think for a 50 foot roll um, I think we paid $35 a roll or something like that or $39 a roll um, before everybody went stir crazy at trying to homestead or whatever they're doing <coughs> so um, it's just trying to be a good steward with uh, our money to uh, reuse and reduce and um, uh, you know live as clean and cheap as possible now going back into uh before we go up to the garden i'm going to show you a couple things that's been awesome on the deck garden too as well is we took these up here and made a structure this is six feet high the top of these uh points right here and uh these are our cherry tomato plants, and um, as you can see right here, one is just eclipsing the six foot up mark. 
and uh side of the poles and this is on me because it's like and that if that's the biggest problem i have with these is i not put enough big enough poles because i did not anticipate these growing this high well that's pretty good um so anyway we got the the structures are a little bit more sound for uh if we get wind over here and i also took some the old smaller ones and put a, a beam across because these things are spreading constantly and I do not want to put too many cable ties around the plants like so. But, you know, again with cable ties and that, realistically we don't have to worry about uh, too much added expense. And down here these plants aren't as high over here. I don't know if it's a shade or what, but they are producing good as you can see. Um, kind of pan around. Come on here. And they do have a massive amount of blossoms uh, coming on right here. Um, this plant too, especially right here. A nice cluster there. And uh, the other thing I wanted to show you were our loofah plants. Gourds. Um, now these things... Um, we figure they say go oh, they can get up to 30 feet and it's like I don't know <clears throat> they spent about a month inside as little seedlings and we got them transplanted in these pots at about a month ago and uh, I'll show you the results right now we got a whole jumble right here going up here this is the only one to grow a little bit more before I can attach it but almost all of these have been attached to the trellis up here. And we got three of them here eclipsing our trellis. Actually, four and five, six over here. <coughs> we got our first blossom already. And we have the one main one right now going all the way up and almost over to the pergola. And if I zoom back out here, um, realistically, this pergola is eight feet high. So we're at roughly about nine feet with that right there. So that is really something amazing to watch. <coughs> so that was about a lot of our work down there. And we head up to the garden. And we'll see what's going on there. Um, we've got a lot more blossoms. Um, we did one heck of a good uh, meat eating t this weekend on here. Probably got about, if I had to guess, maybe 15 pounds of produce. <coughs> a couple kinds of peppers. Um, some huge cucumbers. And probably about a pound of strawberries and about a six seven ounces of raspberries <coughs> so a lot of good eating the other thing that was going on was with our apple tree seedlings we did have some tent caterpillars just starting on the nest um which if you've never had to deal with them they will destroy a huge tree within a season. So it's not something you really want. Not seen any more lately. So I am hoping we got them all. My apologies for not changing the video around. We also added over by the shed, keep a little bit less of an eyesore, some of the uh, lattice work over here for our firewood. We have our newer stock that still has to be seasoned yet. 
and another one here and yeah I know it's a little messy well we got uh, a few projects going on right now but we did get a load of firewood from a friend so we up there and um, the stump we're continuing to work on here to flatten out this area and get rid of this old tree stump and we were going to move the seedling around it's like um, we decided um, it's been growing there um, it's going to provide a little bit more shade in our area over here so we're going to keep it we're going to actually work around that so if you get rid of a lot of this stuff and all that it'll hopefully be better this is when the kids happy project and can burn off some energy and get some work done now when we're digging holes too another thing I wanted to show you was this awesome thing it's called the root assassin we're gonna put this bad boy up against the tree and give you a little bit better thing idea this was $49 and pretty cheap pretty expensive for a shovel but if we look down here there's also a like a saw two saw teeth on both sides and this will do almost as much wonders as using a small rototiller to uh, get inside a hole like when you're planting trees it has no issue going through uh, roots about two inches and yeah I'm trying not to sound like a commercial but hey that is nice it is it is an awesome tool to have and we actually bought two of them because uh, we get busy some other times. Uh, we're going to need it. And by using that, um, and then in turn taking a small tiller, um, uh, we actually planted, it took about a half hour at the most for a lot of these trees. So anyway, into the garden, uh, as you can see, uh, we got some new uh, growth going a lot. Um, finally, finally, I got my first reaper that started to grow. So that was awesome. That was uh, one of the hardest ones I've had to deal with and baby this plant. And if you look down here, over there, and over there are the chocolate Trinidad scorpion peppers. Um, some of the okra seedlings, as you can see, didn't do too good. Some are doing a lot better. And moving over here, we got the blossoms, and they grew up on our Thai dragons. And our habaneros are starting to grow a lot better too so hopefully soon we will have them these are the basket of fire ones which we took about nine peppers of weight about two pounds total off of just these three plants and uh, looking over there we have one starting there and hopefully a couple more soon yep one over there too Over here, now over here are some of our okra as well, and these are really starting to take off. So within the next uh, month or so, you will see a noticeable difference uh, barring a storm or something. Hopefully it won't happen. We also got about 10 pounds of uh, daikon, or 9, no, about 10 stalks, about 2 pounds of daikon radishes. They were way too skinny to be mature because of bolting, because of the heat, and that's on us. So in this bed, we did work it out, and that we're gonna quick till that, uh, hand till this up today and plant some more dill. Um, you can see right here the uh, fava beans starting to come in. There's a couple more, and. Uh, not sure about the snow peas and that. Um, uh, we took about two pounds off of them. They're getting nice size, so those are starting to cut back, and we're going to probably end up. Uh, I don't know if we're going to reseed them or not. We'll have to see. And over here, finally, 
Um, our eggplant is flowering beyond belief in this little roll. And uh, we do have a couple started right there. Another one there. So I am really happy with these uh, plants we got. You know, pan back here. Um, this is about a month and a half ago. Jeannie planted the dill here. And as you can see, it is going awesome. So especially before we get full swing into canning, we uh, would like to grow a lot more of this. Because we will use this up. Nothing's, we're trying to make it sure nothing goes to waste here. And down here, a lot more blossoms for uh, the other type of eggplant. And uh, the mammoth snow peas, these were from Everwild Farms, the seeds. And I bought uh, two more quarter pound packages or one pound packages. Um, as you can see, they grow awesome. They're still growing the next uh, crop. Unfortunately, I won't be canning them because they're too good. Kids love them, so oh well. Still good, good uh, nutrition. Good time growing it, and uh, it does not take very long. Over here, the main garden, we had a lot of explosion over here, and you're going to see. Um, and looky here, got the first pumpkin over here started. going on there actually that might oh well, either it's a pumpkin or a gourd I don't remember what was planted here <laughs> that's okay we'll grow it and over here I'm still waiting for these to start fruiting a little bit not see any uh, female flowers yet but our blue hubbard squash is over here and our watermelons are going nice where three individual plants are. We basically got a nice cluster right here. Actually going out side. They're flowering. And hopefully be connected right here and we will be able to uh, hopefully have them cross pollinate. Over here we took down all the rhubarb and yeah, about 10 pounds of rhubarb off there, and uh, we froze about eight, six, seven pounds of it, and the rest went to an awesome rhubarb and strawberry crisp. Everything except the uh, oatmeal was grown here, and it was fantastic. Um, this is a really ch big chore, this garden, to weed, because there's so much growth on it. It was neglected for so long. But this is also where we dumped our chicken poo last year, so we have a lot more um, nutrients in it. And over here are the couple cantaloupe plants we got. There's one there, and there's one there. Oh, this pumpkin, now, where to begin? This thing is nonstop growing. Um, this is actually over half as wide, this cluster of four pumpkins as uh, the entire garden. Um, by comparison, this plant right here is about two by three and a half feet. So, with the humid weather, this thing has been doing fantastic. Um, try and find a few things over here where we can find surprises. And I know we have some pumpkins growing. Um, let's see, daughter saw a couple around here somewhere. I can try not to step on anything. There looks like one right down there, starting right behind that flower. And I know we 
there's a few other ones growing too. So again, this is a pretty big jumble over here. And some over here, as you can see right here, the pumpkin is going outside the cage as well here. And down here. So yeah, we have a quite the jungle over here. But that's okay. <coughs> Another thing I'm on, this is the first time we've ever tried is propagating his uh, grapes. And this one, we finally did get one of them to take the vine, or take the wire for the vine. And hopefully those will go pretty good as well. If not, we are most likely going to try doing loofahs up here as well next year, if we can. Um, we'll probably keep them in pots. Um, most likely, we will not be having any more uh, gardens in the area dug. But we will be sw trying to switch over to all the uh, bountiful harvest that the tomatoes were in. And all those pots will come up here and uh, we'll have some other planters. They'll be strategically placed so it... Um, We'll be able to add a lot more growing space, and um, we won't we uh, won't be wasting anything. And in turn, both areas will produce more. A good example for those planters are about six by eight inches wide and three feet. These are the basket of fire peppers, and these actually only get about a foot high. So we can comfortably put three to four in the planters right here. And this is about, a, if I had to guess, maybe about four by three feet space, 12 square feet of this garden that can be utilized a little bit better. And one thing too, we're also taking notes on is what we're gonna do with, uh, where we're gonna plant what next year. This being the first year with raised gardens and our issues were, you know, too much sun or not enough sun with some of the tomatoes, and that's fine because um, we will still get a pretty decent harvest up here. But we'll be uh, drawing up plans uh, where we're going to be moving stuff around. But also by doing so, too, we will most likely have a lot more space, a lot more growing space to do that as well. So... Moving right along, inside the uh, tunnel here on the U-shaped bed, this was an, one of the best things I've seen all week in the garden here. Well, I've seen a lot of good things. But this right here is the amount of bean blossoms going right on here. And this is a 15 foot long green greenhouse frame these are all on so so what was amazing is uh that i saw is i it looks like a mess up here but we really should have uh planted a little bit closer together you know pole beans you're pushing about two to three inches a piece and there's some spots you know and some of the rabbits got in that so we're working on that we will be putting uh Two feet of chicken wire around the bottom of the fence perimeter. So, we did get all these. Uh, don't have as many uh, bush beans coming up as we'd like. But, uh, these right here, finally got three of them out of the Chinese asparagus beans. Which are supposed to get as long as a yard. We shall see. Um, and, I'll one thing that's nice is right here these little bean seedlings we got one two three four right here five these actually should not have six we sh these actually should not have really grew because i didn't realize i forgot that uh the wife uh put some preen down which stops the germination of seeds and they still manage to grow so, I mean, that's a testament to the Amish seeds. 
and they're seed saving. As you can see right now, we're getting some nice beans all over here. So this is going to be, this is one of our babies right here that we uh, wanted to do. Um, the top of the frame as well, we finally got one to cross the top. The top of this frame right now is seven feet high. So that's probably, you're looking at about eight feet by the time you figure if you put that plant straight up. And on this side, the pole beans we do were called the rattlesnake pole beans. And what's pretty nice about that is they actually they have a purple flower. So that's something to look into. Um, tomatoes, um, a little mixed blessing. Um, we got to do some staking in here again. Um, uh, the biggest problem we have is we underestimated the staking. But like right here, we are getting romas in like crazy this and here and here all off one plant and we got a couple more blossoms going too and we're looking down here and growing all over here so these we got from the amish as i said with um you know i am really going to start i really want to start uh a lot of stuff buying there because it's well worth the trip if I'm getting these results so right there green peppers are doing okay I'll get one to two a plant and it looks like we're gonna have to harvest some of them pretty soon too which is okay we'll give them a home freeze them whatever probably won't make canning anyway because we'll be uh <laughs> chowing anyway our main thing for canning by the way too is beans and tomatoes so well, I'm sure we'll have enough there. And uh, we already took some decent sized cucumbers. Uh, it's holding the trellis fine. You see a couple growing right there. And uh, got some over here growing down again. Let's see. Yep. And whoa, there's a nice big one hiding. So, and again, all this off of four plants. Um, and right here, our Brussels sprouts have been doing awesome. And uh, this is another one right here, our patty pan squash really took off. And I'm almost afraid it's going to take over, take over uh, the whole thing. It's already almost hitting my ghost pepper, so we're going to try and get a little bit going on there if not oh well i mean there's plenty of space for it to grow and if it overtakes some of the okra well we got more growing over there anyway so and running right over here again more cucumbers over there Another one there. So for four plants, we're getting doing pretty good here. <coughs> um, these even even the bush beans uh, Jeannie put in her pots. Every one of them are flowering and going at an awesome rate. And uh. This is, the, the herb area is kind of sad because we do enjoy growing them and they do look nice, but we're going to see how they do, whether or not they come back next year. So, and if they do, fine. If not, this cage will be put all around the entire area and probably the only thing we'll do is add a raised bed in the middle of this. We'll leave a step down around so other things can grow and maybe put the herbs out in the around the border and still have about a four by fifteen foot bed. There's a lot of blank spaces here, but you know it is what it is. And we didn't simply didn't have the time many things that I get done and the indigo rose tomatoes we got um, those are chef Jeff's but they're under the premium label 
I found the premium label did the best. And one of these peppers are called Pepper Fooled You. And they're basically uh, jalapenos without the heat. So these have been going pretty good. Um, they're again right here, these uh, premium indigo rose tomatoes are currently at about five feet high. Um, the black crim heirloom we tried and I'm not impressed. We do have a we do we do have one plant that's decent, and this one looks like it's making a comeback. And yes, for how gangling they look too, we do keep them because they are still producing. And hey, better than nothing, I guess. And over here, we picked about a good um uh, ten ounces, eight ounces of uh, jalapenos, and they're already starting to grow back, so that's good. And if you look over here. This is only seven plants right here we got of Romas, and we are getting a fantastic start on all these. A lot of nice clusterings, nice size ones down there, and especially down here. We got right now growing currently on one plant, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty-one Separate Roma's already growing on one plant. We go figure it's 15 to 20 a plant. I mean, we already got a good, good one started. So that is definitely a keeper. We were about to give up on these as well too, but uh, they decided to come back as and it's the first time we ever grew them out uh, the Lemon Boys. There's supposed to be a yellow tomato, and that's, there's hope yet. We did, we did not totally get rid of all of them. There's a couple clusters on these ones. And I'll show you the, and these are, I don't remember which ones these were. I think the tag's on the other side, but you get a little bit better view on here. Um, this is my concern right here. Whether it's blight or whatever on here, um, it seems like the plants aren't doing as well over here for the tomatoes. And this, from about the cage here, gets more full sun than anything. So, probably next year, you know, this is why we have to sit there and really look around and see what we're going to do for uh, next year's gardening. Which is good, it gives us something to do in the winter. You know, strawberries, they're doing fine here. Nice, beautiful sun coming through the clouds. And uh, getting back over here. Now, most of these tomatoes all the way down are the Amish paste. And apparently what they are, they're like Romas, only bigger. And I got to say, I'm very impressed with uh, them so far. They're kind of an odd shape, which I don't know is normal, but if uh, anyone knows, uh, please let me know. But you're right here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven on one plant. A lot more flowers coming up, and I'm going to put my hand here for comparison. So they're already getting to be a nice size. And over here, another cluster, so again... A lot of these, I think, of the problem with is just bad planning on my part, putting them there. <coughs> um, hopefully, I don't have too much hope for these beets right now, growing too much bigger in the heat, and which is kind of a shame because the last ones we took were pretty tasty. There's a lot of stuff going to seeds, so yeah, right there, I'm uh. One thing we had to do is sit there and consistently uh, end up uh, tying these up. So I'll do a little bit of job here. Like I said, the broccoli's taken over there, but most of it's gone to seed. So that's about it. I'm, uh, again, lettuce too. I'm, uh, these were actually... Um, uh, one was called a false strawberry plant and that, and it ended up getting seeded by a chipmunk, and we just let it grow. Grow. Um, most of our greens will be done, and 
which kind of stinks because you got to go back to the store lettuce for a while and that, but we will be refining our growing process up mostly with these. For the most part, we will be putting them, the greens, up on the deck area. It's easy to access, easy to water, and um, we basically have a hose. To, I'll tell you what, it's easier a lot of times to take 200 feet of hose, and we will... Uh, just leave it on the yard, moving it when we're lawn mowing and <laughs> getting it done. So, yeah, it's been a pretty awesome day so far today. It's six in the morning. We have a big breakfast. I'm gonna get a couple loose projects wrapped up, and I hope the wind dies down because I would love to get a fire if we could get some of this dried out. As you can see, we still got a lot of scrub we gotta take take out and uh that right there is about a nine foot fire pit so i know it's not a not, not exactly ready season but i want to clear a little bit more of the salt before uh starting a fire because i don't like it too close and we enjoy our place we want it in one piece So, again, I know, I, real smooth. It's all this time on a video, and then we show the messes the time we're going out. I'm sure my ugly mug ain't much better, but oh well. So, yeah. Again, you know, this is probably the best thing I've ever done in my life. Um, the kids have learned a lot. They appreciate hard work um, and earning money. And I got to say, one of the proudest things happened this week as a father. We were at the uh, ReStore and um, usually have a tradition on... Uh, just because, you know, we don't, the kids don't get a lot in that. But, uh, good father-son moment, um, uh, Junior this year got his first, uh, adult tool set. And it's, yeah, it's, you know, basic, 29 bucks, uh, Menard. I don't, I don't remember where we got Menards or whatever. It's 29 bucks, 116 piece, basic sockets, hammer and that. And um, if you scroll down on my photos a little bit more, or postings a little bit more, there's a picture of my, he earned this money and for 20 bucks bought his first toolbox. And um, it's one of those small like combos, maybe about three feet high, but there's like a three drawer chest and a top and like a shelf in the bottom and that. So um, we went through and I was going through some of my tools, I had a few all the doubles and that over there and he was happy so it's nice to see a nine-year-old um have those views especially when i know th people three times his age that don't and some five times his age that don't but again not my circus not my monkeys So, thanks for watching. You see it? Um, and I'm, you know, hope there's a lot more that we'll be able to <clears throat> share with you next week as we learn. Um, uh, you know, for me personally, I by no means don't know it all. Um, uh, to to me, this um this area is uh, for want of a better term, nature's laboratory. Um, I'm interested in seeing how to grow, what to grow as fast and as big as possible. And um, so when I see plants that are failing, um, you chalk it up as experience. Don't chalk it up as a failure. If you're going to chalk up a failure of every single plant that you killed, you know, you ain't going to enjoy it. That's when it becomes work. And um, I don't consider this work. But, uh, you know, there's just sometimes, like this week, this week I was off and there was a lot of hot days, so there's only so much you can do. 
you know, you don't pay yourself to, you know, to kill yourself in the heat, end up in the hospital with heat stroke or whatever, and all the funky tests they do now to get their funding, so, you know, because you didn't want to take it easy, so, you know, we have plenty indoors anyway to do, so, but we did get um, a few other areas done and a few other things we didn't anticipate done. Um, had time for a road trip and we did go up to the Amish and <coughs> we stocked up pretty good, pretty good on there. I think uh, for dry and powdered ingredients, I think we canned, oh boy, if I'm not mistaken, 24 half gallon jars of them. So I uh, got some old... Uh, toy. I found, if for those two, and showing my age now, I found, and I kind of uh, showing another video, um, blackjack and uh, clove gum by the Beech Nut Company, I think it was called. Um, I did not see that around since I was a kid. And, you know, flavors like that we can appreciate, and the kids won't today, so hey, that's just one more snack for me, because they keep their meat hogs off them. So, I hope everybody has a pretty good day, and uh, we'll see you next time. God bless.